Oh, hello once again. Today, we're going to go over the same concept. I was asked from a viewer, when you troubleshoot, when do you look for the common cause, the common fault? So, I came upon this, like we were talking about before, BMWs, and it is similar for any type of vehicle. Now, a relay is a device that will control a small current will control a larger current to the load the load in this case are the light bulbs the load can be your fuel pump you can have auxiliary fuel pump like in this bmw you can have a main fuel pump two fuel pumps like today's vehicles you can have a starter motor that's the load the fuel injectors are not necessarily the loads, but they are the outputs to the computer. Big difference. So, when we start with relays, and this is the same concept, whenever you have relays, they will work the same for any type of vehicle. That's why I'm trying to teach this the way that everybody can understand. <clears throat> Number one, always remember this. The load, which we just spoke about, is always going to have 12 volts. The fuel pump is going to have 12 volts to it. Whether it's the auxiliary, whether it's the main, it's going to have 12 volts. <clears throat> the starter motor is going to have 12 volts. It's the load. The light bulbs, whether it's right or left, doesn't matter. Going to have 12 volts, 12 volts. Parking lamps, headlamps, license plate lamps, 12 volts. Remember, remember that. If you have the car on with the engine, so the alternator is replenishing the system and keeping the accessories going, so you have maybe 14 volts. <clears throat> but if I troubleshoot the lights, I don't need the car to be on. It's enough for me to just put the switch on and then measure for 12 volts. Now, let's look for a common failure, but before that, let's delve into it and analyze any schematic for any vehicle, how it would work. Remember, in the place of these, put a fuel pump. One fuel pump here, one fuel pump here. You could put a starter motor here and a starter motor there. <clears throat> Let's see how they would work. And this is the, the basic concept for any vehicle. Like I said, <clears throat> once you understand this, you will grasp uh, electronics much better. One relay, one relay, okay? One is for, as you can see over here, one is for low beam, one is for high beam. As you can see over here, high beam, low beam. The terminals, as you can see over here, and again, I always have to go close. The vision goes after these diagrams. So 86 and 85, you always remember, those are the control side of it the 30 is always the one that has the power and 87 is the one that flips so 87 remember goes to the load so if i ask you which pin which terminal of a relay goes to the load 87 which terminal of this one goes to the load 87 remember that 87 1987 okay now <clears throat> let's start over here what do we start with? Start side do we start with? Let's say we have a problem. Go to your car, you turn on the switch for for the lights. Guess what? Lights are not coming on. Not the high, not the low, not the right, not not the left. In today's vehicle, sometimes you have the body control module and the relay, which is responsible. This is a much older vehicle than a BMW. The concept is the same. The relay will always function the same 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later. It does not matter. Small current will control a higher current to the load. Doesn't matter. Which one do we start with first? Always start with which one? This one first. So we have a B over here. B means it went to another part of a schematic that was also labeled B. That is not present here. So as you can see over here, we always start over here. So current flows through here, follow the green, through here, and to a physical ground. X173 is a physical ground. Okay? 
Once that happens, we know what happens. This engages this, the contacts, and now the contacts close. So now current can flow over here, front power distribution box, through here, follow the orange, through 30. And remember, where does, it, where does the current come to the load? What terminal? 87, like the year 1987. Remember that. Current flows here. Here's a splice. What happens at this splice over here? This is called a splice. I call it a node, like I told you. That means the current has two paths. It splits. Some current goes here. Some current goes here through this fuse. Notice the fuse rating is the same for this one and for this one. It's the same fuse rating for the right side, the same fuse rating for the left side. Correct? So, now we come over here. What's missing over here is we don't have a fuse over here. There is no fuse on this side, as you can see in this picture. However, remember one thing, B is cut off. There's another part of B. Maybe there is a fuse on the other part of the schematic which is not present over here. So there has to be some fuse in the other system. However, when you look at this, no fuse here and no fuse here. The only fuses you see are actually after the load side over here. So 7.5 amps, what's the highest that we can get? 7.5 amps. Let's come down over here. We were over here. We have a choice with CCM. And many of these schematics with Chilton, Haynes, they have abbreviations. Sometimes you have an option. If CCM, I don't know what CCM stands for. What do I do? I look, for, I look further in the schematic, a little further down. CCM, when I look this, check control module, I say, uh-huh, okay. That's what CCM stands for. See, these are new mo uh, uh, schematics, even though they're old uh, models, However, you always have to try to move around in a schematic and find details that will help you identify things. I didn't know CCM is what it stands for until I saw this check control module here. That means with CCM, which I take this path. If I do not have a CCM, see, you do not see any CCM. You see a straight wire. That means without this module, we go this way and right to the load being a left low beam. Same applies over here. We came over here, the current split over here. It had a choice. With CCM, with a check control module, if we have it in our unit, a, 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 a model. If we don't have it, without it, we go straight wire, right to the right. <clears throat> That's that. Now, after that, this should be pretty easy. Same thing. We come over here, current flows which side? This side or this side? This side to ground. <clears throat> then current flows here. This is closed. Which terminal? 87, 1987, the year. Goes here. What happens here? Same thing. <clears throat> Notice the fuse rating was the same here as it was on the other one. Same rating. 7.5, 7.5. Current goes here, current goes here. How much do we have at the, uh, at the load? These are the loads, 12 volts, like we just discussed earlier in the video. So voltage-wise, let's go over here, 12 volts. How do I have 12 volts over here? Where do I see a battery? I don't. I That's where the creativity of schematic analyzation is necessary. I assume that A is going to somewhere through a fuse, through the battery, but it's not shown here. It would have to be 12 volts somehow being connected to it, even though it's not here. Sometimes not, things are not direct to you. They are not put every single thing. You have to derive and understand what the voltage would be. That's the challenge of electronics, especially schematics. So 12 volts here, and now... If this goes to ground, how much should this be? Zero volts. What about here? This is where connected to zero volts to ground. So we have what we need. We have 12 volts on one side. We have zero volts on the other side. Now, what about this? 12 volts here. How do I know this is 12 volts? Where do you see a battery or anything like that? You don't. 
like I just said for this one, same theory applies. We use our ingenuity. We have to use our creativity of understanding. This probably comes from the battery or through a fuse or wherever it comes from, and it comes from 12 volts. How much on this side? 12 volts. Why? Because this is just a contact, a switch. No voltage loss. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. How much? What about the fuses? 12 volts here. How about after the fuse? 12 volts. What about this fuse? 12 volts. What about after this fuse? 12 volts. What about from here to here? It's the same wire, isn't it? So 12 volts, 12 volts. Same applies here. 12 volts, 12 volts. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. How about after the fuse? 12 volts. How about here? 12 volts. How about after the fuse? 12 volts. Hopefully until you get it, I keep on repeating it and repeating it until it is automatic to you. Now, we had a problem. We started off with driver says none of the lights work. Let's say, again, this was two fuel pumps. Both fuel pumps don't work. Let's say these were two starter motors. Both starter motors don't work. Let's say this was a motor for a power window left. This was for the power window for the right. Both don't work. We look at what works. We look at what doesn't work. We look at both variables. We have a problem. If the left side, if the left low beam works, but the high beam does not work, what do you think is the problem? This doesn't work, but this works. Now, first thing is over here, you would think, okay, maybe this is not activated. Or maybe before there was a fuse that, bl that blew. That's possible. Or this is not good. If this ground is not good, guess what? It'll knock out both of them. Both of them will be knocked out. Why? Because they share the same ground. That's what you look for. I started off by saying, when do you look for the common cause? Here is the common cause. What will knock out this relay? What will knock out this relay? Again, two fuel pumps, two starter motors, two power windows. Doesn't matter Toyota, doesn't matter Hyundai, Sonata, doesn't matter whatever it is. The, I just analyze the schematic. Anything that's common will knock out both. So we come over here. This might knock it out. If this side is not working, this might be the problem. This side might be the problem. What's the best thing that I always say? Always go to 87. Put that copper wire like I did in that video, right? Put in the terminal. You're not gonna, you're not gonna break the terminal. Put copper to uh, uh, wire in there. Measure 12 volts here. If you measure 12 volts here, you know all of this is working because this was engaged. Now you have to work with this side of the problem, of the circuit. Let's say this is not working, but this is working. If this is not working, can this fuse be bad? No, why? Because this is still working. What's left? This fuse and the wire, and obviously the bulb itself. Can it be the ground? This is not working, this is working. How, how can it be the ground? Then why is this working? This is a common ground. That's why I said common cause. Let's go back to the original question from the viewer. When do you look for the common cause? What's the problem here? All lights are out. If all lights are out, where is a common failure? Where is this relay and this relay common together or tied together? You have to come to the theory, it's the ground. This ground share is shared by low beam this ground is shared by high beam can it be that over here and over here they're not getting 12 volts the same 12 volts maybe a fuse blue no why this is a this goes to a a different circuit this goes to where b therefore they're different systems if they're different systems different locations they cannot have a common cause if this will be b and this will be b might be if this would be a and this would be a then they go to the same place schematic wise electrical wise then i would think maybe it is a 12 volt line but since this is different from this one 
No. We have to come to a common cause of this one. This has to be how much? Zero volts. Ground is always zero volts. Always. Again, why am I teaching this at the 15 minutes of the video? Why am I wasting the, uh, a viewer's precious time of 15 minutes in his life, right? Because I want to teach you. We said it does not matter. Two fuel pumps, two solder motors, two power windows, two power, power doors, two power um, seats, whatever they are. Look for the common cause. If the left one works, what do I say to myself right away? Does the right one work? If the right one works, then I have to take into consideration this is working. Always ask yourself that. So I hope this was helpful. Please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematic for Auto. And my other one needs 6,000 minutes, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. And there will be hands-on. Hopefully that I'll show you exactly what I mean to test relays only in circuit with the load. You cannot test, take out relays, test power, test ground. I know it's done all over. That's not, the, that's not a, the correct way of measuring. You have to put a load on the circuit. Okay, so go to that video, how to measure f uh, uh, relays in circuit on the channel, John Transformative for Auto. And thanks for your time.